Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we're going to be completing the audit. Completing the audit, I'm going to I'm going to look at it as its own separate cycle and therefore we're starting this cycle. There are no videos in this playlist. I will start to populate the playlist as of right now. So what is completing the cycle? At this stage we have completed the test of control, test of transaction, test of detail balance. Basically we're done with the field work. What we are doing now is try to wrap things up. And what we're going to do, we're going to break down this process into seven steps. The first step will be collecting information about presentation and disclosure, which we will cover in this session. Review contingent liabilities, including clients' attorney letters. Review subsequent event, which we're going to cover dual dating in that process. Accumulate final evidence, such as perform final analytical procedures, evaluate going concern issues, required schedule, so on and so forth. Evaluate results and other documentation issue the audit report, then communicate with the audit committee and management, which we're going to cover the management letter in this session. So let's go ahead and get started with presentation and disclosure. What is presentation and disclosure? Well, presentation and disclosure, what we, we're working on that throughout the audit. But at this point, we're going to look at the overall picture. So throughout the audit, we collected information about various accounts, account receivable, notes payable, retained earning, inventory, etc. So for example, an account receivable, if there's any pledged receivable, if there's any pledged inventory, what inventory method we are using. So all that information need to be disclosed. And we were doing, we were doing so throughout the audit. But at the end of the audit, our concern is to make sure we have disclosed everything. Okay, so one of the primary concerns related to the presentation is determine whether management has disclosed all required information. So here we're looking at the completeness. We're looking at the overall picture. Maybe now we see everything. Maybe something is missing. Maybe we need to connect two notes together because we have the overall picture now. So we would review all the information to determine if we should be aware of any missing facts. Now we're looking at the overall picture, not at one specific account. As auditors, as business acumen, we should know if we are missing anything. Okay? Then we evaluate whether the presentation and disclosure comply with accounting standard. Did our now we, we did present and disclose. Now we want to make sure those presentation and disclosure gets reviewed and make sure they are in compliance with the accounting standard that you are using, whether it's GAAP or IFRS. We need to evaluate whether individual statement reflect the appropriate classification, you know, short term versus long term, and description of account consist with the requirement. So the description of the account, what, what terminology are we using? We want to make sure that the information presented in proper format in proper form or proper format. For example, for the debt, we need to show the five year of debt repayment schedule. Are we showing that properly? Are we using the proper terminology in the proper context? For example, if we're using FIFO, do we know, are we exactly using FIFO? Are we using the term appropriately? Um, now, when it comes to disclosure, special care should be given to contingent liabilities and subsequent events, which we will cover those in two separate recordings because they are important. But here's a list of presentation and disclosure that the company will need to be aware of. The fair value of their assets, how did they fair value their assets? Remember level one, level two, level three. How did they account for the long-term contract? Is it the percentage of completion or the completed contract method? Disclose, tell us how you did this. Warranty expense and associated liabilities, the depreciation and amortization method and schedule supporting your computation, impairment of any depreciable asset, how did you come up with that? Impairment of goodwill and intangible asset, also how you came up with that? Any disclosure about stock option and how would it affect earnings per share, if any? Disclosure about property, plant, and equipment. Disclosure about the various debt, average interest rate, repayment schedule, so on and so forth. Is this a complete list? Absolutely not. Uh, this is just some examples of presentation and disclosure that the auditor will need to be aware of. Because in these, in these disclosure, the auditor will, will uh, the management make some estimates. So we want to make sure it's all reasonable, all re uh, com in compliance with the accounting standard. Now, uh, so the audit objective, we have like basically four accuracy and rights and obligation. Did the company disclose event and transaction that have occurred and pertain to the entity? So did it occur and did it pertain to the entity? How do we know? For example, we would review that contract to determine that account receivable are pledged as collateral. It doesn't have to be account receivable. Inventory could be pledged as collateral. Maybe a building could be pledged as a collateral. But how do we know this? We review the debt contract, the debt agreement, and to make sure that what are our rights and obligation when it comes to those assets and liabilities. Completeness, this is important. Did we disclose everything? And this is what we're saying here. We want to make sure we disclose everything. That's important. Now, how would we make sure we disclose everything? Now, in the real world, 
there's simply a checklist. So the so the auditor use a checklist to determine if the financial statement um, include all disclosure required by the accounting standard. And simply a checklist is simply a checklist. You'll have a checklist, okay? And what is a checklist? It looks something like this. Maybe I should have um, show you an example. For example, it would say something like, uh, "Did you disclose your policy?" for inventory and you would say yes I did disclose you would check did you disclose the policy for property plant and equipment did you account for any impairment so there's like questions for all possible account and if the account if you don't have for example inventory you'll put not applicable or if it's applicable you put yes and if there's any explanation you need to put you need to put there so there's a checklist and this is why you don't miss anything in most audit firm they will have a checklist I should have showed you a checklist but I'm pretty sure if you go to Google and you Google you know, disclosure checklist, and they will give you a disclosure checklist. But this is what you are looking at. Classification and understandability. You want to make sure that the financial information is appropriately presented and described, and described, and disclo and disclosure are clearly expressed. Here you are concerned with the proper classification, current, non-current, and you want to make sure someone read the footnotes for clarity. Now, remember, you are writing those footnotes for pretty much anyone. Because if it's publicly traded company, everyone and anyone use, uses the footnotes. So you want to make sure the footnotes are clear, they are understandable, they are not confused. Uh, you know, if somebody read them, it doesn't confuse them. They will get the picture that's intended to give. So clarity is important. Now bear in mind, when you work on these financial statements in the real world, you don't have to write this from scratch. You could either use the prior year, tweak them a little bit, and most of the firm, they will have accounting auditing program that will have basically a boilerplate disclosure for any, any possible account you can think of. Now, you have to tweak it, make sure it's clear, make sure it represents what you want it to represent, but you don't have to write things from scratch, so keep that in mind. Accuracy and valuation, financial and other information are disclosed fairly and at the appropriate amount. Here you are concerned with accuracy. So you would not to reconcile amount included in a long-term footnote to the information examined and supported in the auditor long-term debt schedule. For example, here what you're doing, when you, when you complete the footnotes, and the footnotes you're going to have various schedules, okay? You want to make sure when you add up all the schedules, what we're saying here, it tied up to, for example, it tied up to the general ledger, it tied up to the trial balance, it tied up to the uh, to the permanent file, so on and so forth. So the information in the notes are accurate, okay? The, how do you know that they're accurate? They are, they support what's in the financial statement. So if you add up all your various notes, they will add up to 5 million, and if you look in your general, in your balance sheet, you'd see notes payable of 5 million or something like that. Everything matches, you're, you're, it's reconciling. And this is basically what you have to do for presentation and disclosure. In the next session, we would look at contingent liabilities and specifically letters from the client's attorney. This will be the next session in completing the audit. Now make sure you read your textbook, complete your homework, your quiz, and obviously if you're studying for your CPA exam, as I always say, study hard, it's worth it.